Take a look at the code that we've got up on the screen right now. On lines 1 and 2, we have a definition for a dog class. The dog has one attribute called name. Line number 4, this part creates a dog and puts a pointer to that dog, like a dog leash, into the variable my dog. Finally, right down here, we actually take my dog and go ahead and print out the name. As you can see, we've got an issue with the code right now because when we run this, the dog has no name. In fact, it seems to be an absolute tragedy that we're allowing dogs to be created and never being named. Dogs should always have a name when they're born. And it would be great if somehow we could require when the dog is constructed that a dog has a name. And we can actually do that. In fact, we can even do a little bit more than that. When a dog is born, there should be some sort of balloons, cake, candy, something like that. We can get the computer to automatically do something when the dog is born. To do that, we're going to create a new method, a specialized method. And just like all other methods, the method's indented inside of class, and it starts with def. The difference in this method is it has to have an exact specific name. In this case, two underscores. Here's one underscore. Here's the second underscore. It's really easy to just accidentally do one underscore. Init, short for initialize, followed by two underscores. Parentheses and self. Just like any other method, not really anything new there. It's got to have a self on it. Two underscores, remember, before and after the init. There's a spa I put a space in here just so you can see there's two underscores. And then self. Now inside of this, I can do anything that I would like to have automatically run when the dog is created. In this case, when I run this program, it prints out down here that a new dog has been born. And we still don't have a dog name yet. That's still sort of a question mark. But we are automatically running code, code that's in here, whenever the dog is constructed. This basically calls this function right here. This is called a constructor. And technically, with Python, it's really not quite a constructor. But we're going to go ahead and call it a constructor. And in most languages, you're going to call it a constructor. It's a method that's automatically run as a class is created. It allows you to initialize and set up the data in that class. And in the case of Python, you just do a def and then double underscore init double underscore. What else can we do with a constructor? And how can we fix this whole name problem? Well, that's pretty easy. I can require a parameter to be given when the dog's created. In this case, my name has been passed in as the parameter. And down here, I'm going to do self.name equals my name. When I do self.name, the self basically refers to this dog. Remember when I called my dog, I basically pass in a reference to my dog by default as a first parameter. That comes in as self. And I'm saying my name is going to equal this name that's being passed in. My name is my name right here. And the self.name, so whatever's passed in, is going to be stuffed into this variable right up here. And right now, if I run this program, the computer will give me an error because I'm not giving the dog a name when I create it. Right here, there's an error. And down here on the side, it says that the init function right here takes two arguments. Here's one. Here's two. And it is said only one is given. In this particular case, it doesn't look like I'm giving any. But remember, my dog is passed in automatically. That counts as parameter one. Therefore, I haven't given it the second parameter. I need to do that before I can call the dog function. It's preventing me from creating a dog without a name. Now when I run it, spot is going to come in as my name. 
and get assigned to the self name. Indeed, the new dog has been born and the dog's name is Spot. This comes in for this variable. And a really common mistake is to do the following. What I have up here works, but if I were to do this instead, just because this matches this, they're actually two different variables. This is self.name. This is the local scope of the function's name. Two entirely different variables. Whatever is passed in here, in this particular case spot, is stored in here, which is gone once this function ends and never hits self.name, the class's instance variable. Therefore, when I run this, while it might look like the name should be passed in because I've got name here and I've got name here. When I actually run it, spot's not named. This is another common mistake. Now when I run the program, again the dog's name hasn't been set. This looks like it ought to work and it's really close to working, but here's the issue. In this case, spot comes in and is stored in my name. My name takes that and stores it in a variable called name, but this is not self.name. What I've done is I've created a brand new variable. In fact, I've got three variables. I've got my name, I've got name, and I've got self.name in play. I'm accidentally creating a brand new variable called name and storing my name inside of it rather than storing it inside of self.name. As you can see this would be an incredibly easy mistake to make and the program runs just fine if you make that mistake but name never gets set to the value that you expect and it can be a frustrating bug to figure out. Sometimes people don't like to use multiple different types of variable names. For instance, in this case, right here, I've got my name, and right here, I've got name. Programmers aren't really that original of a sort of person and don't like to create multiple variable names that basically represent about the same thing. You will find a lot of programmers do the following. And in fact, I like to do this too since I'm not that original. In this case, I've got two variables in play. I've got a variable called name, and I've got a variable called self.name. Like before, these are two different variables. One is local in scope, local to this function. This one is a class, or more specifically, a class instance variable. It's a field, and it's a different variable even though they share the same name. Like two people can be named Mary. In this case, I've got Mary from the init function, and I've got Mary from the dog class. Okay, that's how you create an init function, how you pass in parameters to init function, and how to use those parameters to set the attributes in the init function.